Welcome back everyone. In this lecture, I will actually develop some tools called Casper elements uh, in order to prove complete reducibility of finite dimensional representations of semi-simple algebras. So, we will uh, recall with the Schur's lemma. So, I just recall some of the things that I we have done uh, in terms of representations. So, first uh, we recall Schur's lemma. So, Schur's lemma. states the following. So, if we have a representation, so let uh, phi from g to g l of v, so let us assume it is irreducible. So, then the only endomorphism of v only endomorphism of V that commutes with uh, commuting with all elements phi of x where x and g. So, they are all scalars. So, what is the meaning of this? Suppose if you have a map let us say f from V to V such that, so this is a linear map. So, this is commutes with uh, all this phi of x, x in G means it commutes with the action of uh, G. So, that means uh, it is actually a real uh, rep G module homomorphism. So, this is a G module homomorphism. So, then f must be scalar times sub identity. So, that is what uh, Schur's lemma says if we assume v is irreducible representations of g. So, with this is something we have already proved, I am not going to prove. So, I am just uh, recalling this statement which will be used uh, later. So, again uh, we also define what is called this uh, dual representation as well as uh, this home of v comma w. So, let us quickly recall them. So, here is the definition of this uh, dual representation. So, let uh, V be a G module. So, then one can consider the dual space which we denoted by V star. So, which is nothing but all linear maps from V to C. So, which is uh, denoted by home C V comma C. So, if we do not mention this C it is assumed to be linear maps from V to C. So, this is called the dual space and this dual space can be made into G module uh, by defining the following. Okay. So, this becomes G module. If we define the following action of G on this uh, V star. So, how it is defined? So, given f in v star and x in g, so the action x dot f it is defined to be again a map from v to c. So, which is acting on some given element v in capital V as follows. So, this is given by minus f of x dot v and this is uh, true for all x in g and v in v and uh, f in v star. So, this is something we have already checked. So, this defines uh, representation G representation on this V star. Okay. So, given this uh, G representation V, so we can actually use that to define G representation on V star. So, more generally one will be able to define on any home space V comma W. So, let us recall this home space. So, home representation. So, what it is? So, we start with uh, two representation let us say V and W. So, they are G modules. So, then we can consider this home space between them. So, these are all set of all linear maps from V to W. So, this is set of all C linear maps from V to W. So, now this home space can be made into G module by defining the rule 
x dot f which is acting on v to be just x dot f of v minus f of x dot v. So, this is for given x in g and f in home v comma w and v in capital v. So, this is something we already checked that uh, this defines g action on this uh, home v comma w and this makes uh, home v comma w as a g module. So, now uh, we will see that. So, this is something I already left it as exercise. So, if you have not done this, so you should definitely do it. So, if we have this uh, uh, g module home v comma w. So, this is naturally isomorphic to the tensor product v star tensor w. So, this v star is already defined as a representation g representation. If w is another g representation, then we can consider this tensor product of these two representation v star tensor w. So, that will be as a vector space naturally isomorphic to home v comma w. So, we say that that natural map is actually indeed g module isomorphism. So, this is as g modules. So, this is something uh, one should uh, definitely check. So, now we will define uh, what is called this Cosmere element of a given representation. So, this is on this is actually a very important tool uh, in order to prove complete reducibility for finite dimensional representations of semi simple algebra. So, let us define what this is. So, we start with G being uh, semi simple Lie algebra, finite dimensional semi simple Lie algebra. So, using a killing form, we saw that the many characterization of this uh, finite dimensional semi simple Lie algebra. And we take uh, actually a faithful representation of G, okay, which we denoted by pi. So, what is faithful representation? It is a representation of G. So, that is uh, it is a Lie algebra homomorphism from G to G L of E which is actually 1 to 1. So, this is a 1 to 1 map. So, that is faithful representation. So, this is the data we start with. So, then by imitating the killing form one can define a bilinear form on G. Okay. So, that is defined as follows. So, define this beta, so which is actually depending upon this representation pi, so which is a map from G cross G to complex numbers. So, this is given by beta of x comma y equal to the trace of pi of x composition pi of y. So, this is basically generalizes the notion of killing form to uh, any representation. So, killing form if you recall it is cap of x y given to be trace of uh, add x composition add y. So, which is defined for the adjoint representation. Now, one can easily generalize that definition to any uh, this uh, representation pi. So, indeed we will see later that uh, this uh, being this one to one map is actually not that important. One can define this Kasmir element for any given representation. So, we will come to that later. First, we will consider uh, this particular case and this is uh, defined for each element x, y and g. So, now it is <coughs> immediate that one can easily check this beta must be symmetric bilinear form. Okay. So, beta is symmetric and bilinear form on g. So, this is something easy to check because the trace being linear and this product being bilinear. So, we get uh, beta is bilinear and symmetric bilinear form. So, now because beta of x y is given in terms of the trace, now using the trace property one can easily check that beta is also associative. So, beta is associative. So, this is something I leave it to you to check. So, for what, what is the meaning of associativity? So, if we take beta and then compute this uh, beta of bracket x y comma z. So, this has to be equal to beta of x comma bracket y z. So, we have already seen uh, application of this associativity when we uh, we are dealing with the killing form. So, one of the important application is that if we take the radical of this uh, bilinear form. So, that must be ideal inside your Lie algebra. So, what is the radical? 
So, radical is again defined very similar to for the killing form. So, this is uh, those x in g such that, so this beta of x comma y is 0 for all y in g. So, this is called radical of beta. So, one can easily check this radical must be ideal inside g. Okay, this is something I leave it to you. So, this is very similar to what we have done for by killing form. So, now uh, we can see that this radical is being ideal inside g. So, the elements of the radical satisfy this following property. So, if we take uh, uh, this uh, trace of this uh, pi of x comma pi of y which is nothing but uh, beta of x y. So, this is actually 0 for all x y inside this radical of beta. So, that means if we take the image of this radical beta, so which is actually inside your uh, GL of V, so this must be solvable. So, this is solvable Lie algebra using the Cartan's first criterion because this satisfies this trace condition. So, that actually makes this pi of radical beta is solvable Lie algebra. So, now uh, radicals being actually uh, isomorphic to this uh, pi of radical of beta because pi is uh, injective. So, radical of beta is actually isomorphic to pi of radical of beta. So, that implies this radical of beta is actually soluble ideal inside G. So, this is soluble ideal inside G. But since G is being semi simple, so the maximal soluble ideal must be 0. So, that implies that this radical of beta must be 0. So, the radical of beta must be 0 as G being semi simple. So, that means this beta, the bilinear form that we have considered, that is actually non degenerate bilinear form. So, this implies beta is non degenerate bilinear form. So, more or less uh, all the properties of the killing form is actually carried to this beta. Okay. This is symmetric bilinear form and associative and it is also non-degenerate uh, uh, bilinear form defined on this beta sorry defined on this g. So, this is something uh, very very important. So, now uh, using this information, so we will be able to define what is called this Casimir element. So, let us actually use this information. So, since this beta is actually non-degenerate on G, so given any basis one can talk about a dual basis of that given basis. So, let us fix one basis. So, let us say that x1, etcetera, xm, so this is the basis of G. Now, since beta is non-degenerate on G, so what one can do? One can actually uh, identify a dual basis of this uh, given basis x1, etcetera, xm. So, let uh, this y1, etcetera, ym be the dual basis. So, be the dual basis of this x1, etcetera, xm. So, how the dual basis is defined? So, dual basis is defined uh, with respect to the following equations. So, when we compute this beta of xi comma yj, so then we should be getting this uh, delta ij. This should, this is true for each ij from 1 to m. So, using this equation, the dual basis actually uniquely determined. So, given xi, there exists unique yj such that this beta of xi comma yj is equal to delta ij. So, if you have not uh, seen this uh, fact, you should definitely check this. So, this is uh, an elementary fact from linear algebra. So, now uh, we will use the associative of uh, beta and then try to actually uh, construct this Cosmere element. So, which is actually element inside this endomorphism of V, uh, which actually commutes with the action of G. Okay. So, what is the Cosmere element? So, let us let me first define. So, the Cosmere element of this representation pi is defined to be, so let us denote it by C pi of beta. So, a priori this is actually depending upon the bilinear form that we have defined. Of course, the bilinear form is also depending upon the representation that we have chosen. So, 
because of that we can suppress the notation to be C pi there is no issue with that. So, how it is defined this is actually you take all this uh, pi of x i uh, times this pi of y i for i range from 1 to m. So, this is an element inside your endomorphism of V. So, this element is called the Casimir element of this representation pi. So, what is the important fact? So, the fact is which we will check now this element that we have defined C pi which is inside your endomorphism of V. So, this commutes with the action of G. So, this commutes with with the action of G. So, what is the meaning of that? So, that means C pi commutes with pi of x for all x. So, that means the bracket between these two are 0 for all x and g. So, in particularly the C pi defines an endomorphism from V to V which is a G module map. So, this is the consequence. So, the C pi is indeed defines an endomorphism of G module map. So, let us uh, do this computation and then check this. So, for this purpose uh, first we need to actually uh, fix some notation and then uh, see some relations between the uh, coefficients uh, that are involved in the computation. So, for that purpose let us start with some x in g and then you write this uh, bracket x uh, x comma x i to be the summation a i j x j where j runs over 1 to m. Similarly, we write x comma y i to be summation b i j y j where j runs over 1 to m. So, now using the associativity we will actually see some relations between the coefficients this a i j and this b i j. So, what is that? So, let us use this the associativity using the associativity of beta. So, we get the following. So, what we get? So, we compute let us say a i k. So, which is given to be summation j range from 1 to m a i j beta of x j comma y k. So, this is just a definition of uh, this uh, dual basis. So, now what it is if you just uh, do the computation. So, this summation a i j can be actually taken inside. So, this is exactly equal to beta of summation a i j x j j runs over and then comma y k. So, this is this element. Now, you can see that this element can be replaced by bracket uh, x comma x i. So, this is exactly equal to beta of bracket x comma x i comma y k. So, now, so this can be uh, rewritten as follows. So, using this uh, skew symmetric about the uh, Lie product, we write this as minus beta of x i comma x bracket with y k. So, now use the associativity and then rewrite this as minus beta of x i comma bracket x y k. So, now this bracket x y k is given by summation b k j. So, if you rewrite this then we get minus summation j range from 1 to m b k j beta of x i comma y j. So, this is what we get. But note that beta of x i comma y j it is a delta i j. So, in particularly so when i equal to j we get this uh, coefficient b k i. So, this is exactly gives us minus b k i. So, this means what we proved we proved that this a k i is nothing but equal to minus b k i using the associativity of beta and this is true for all i k. Okay. So, now we will actually use this in order to compute uh, uh, the C pi with the pi of x okay, the commutator. So, let us uh, actually do that computation. So, for that computation uh, initially we need uh, uh, one important identity. So, which is something very easy to check I will leave it to you to check. So, this is the identity that I recall. So, if we take 3 elements x, y, z from this endomorphism of V 
and then if you compute the bracket x with y z. So, then that should be equal to the bracket x y times e z plus the bracket y times the bracket x e z and this is true for all x y e z inside your endomorphism. Okay. So, this is some very easy computation one can directly rewrite what is the meaning of this bracket a b and then one can check left hand side is equal to right hand side. So, now uh, using this identity let us compute what happens if you take the commutator between pi of x and c pi. So, for any x in g, so let us compute this bracket uh, pi of x with the c pi. So, this is by definition you can see that this is summation over i the bracket pi of x comma pi of x i times pi of y i. So, this exactly looks like the term the bracket x comma y z. So, we just replace this by what is there on the right side. So, then this is equal to summation over i bracket pi of x comma pi of x i bracket pi of y i plus again summation over i pi of x i times the bracket pi of x comma pi of y i. So, this is what we get. So, now you can see that the bracket x comma x i is nothing but given to be summation a i j x j where j range from 1 to m. So, now if you apply pi on both side you can see that so this pi of bracket pi of x comma pi of x i is given by summation a i j pi of x j. So, now we, we will just substitute this inside uh, uh, inside this double star. So, then we get the bracket pi of x comma c pi is equal to summation the bracket i j a i j pi of x j times pi of y i. Similarly, on the right side also second term also can be replaced using this summation b i j. So, then this is summation b i j where again i j varies pi of x i times pi of y j. So, this is what we get. So, now note that we already have this relation a k i is nothing but minus b k i b k i. Okay. So, now using this uh, relation you can see that so the terms that are involved here get cancelled. So, you get uh, the bracket pi of x comma c pi is equal to 0. So, now using this we can easily conclude that the c pi actually commutes with uh, all the elements of pi x where x in g. So, that means the c pi defines uh, g module map from v to v. Okay. So, this is very very important observation. So, now what we are going to do we are actually uh, going to apply this uh, when we actually uh, take v to be irreducible representation and then see actually what is happening. So, let us actually recap what we have done so far. So, we started with the faithful representation. So, g being actually semi simple Lie algebra and we took this faithful representation uh, from g to g l of v. So, now then uh, using this uh, rep representation we define this bilinear form beta from g cross g to c given by beta of x comma y to be equal to trace of pi of x composition pi of y for all x y and g. So, then we observe that this beta is actually non-degenerate symmetric bilinear form so in particularly given a basis we can talk about it's a dual basis 
So, we fix the basis x 1 etcetera x m of g. So, then we took the dual basis. So, this is a given basis. So, the dual basis we denoted by y 1 etcetera y m of g. So, then we define what is called the c pi. So, which is summation pi of x i times pi of y i. So, which is an element of this endomorphism. So, now this element is actually commutes with all elements pi of x. So, that is what we prove for I like and G. In particularly, the C pi actually defines G module homomorphism from V to V. So, now because of this definition of C pi, you can see that if we compute this trace of C pi, so that is something easy to compute because the trace of C pi will be equal to summation trace of this pi of x i times pi of y i okay, for i range from 1 to m. Now, note that this x i and y i they are given to be dual basis. So, in particularly, so this is going to be your beta of x i comma y i. So, that is nothing but just 1. So, this is exactly going to give us m. So, which is the dimension of your Lie algebra. So, that means the trace of the c pi which is independent of the basis that we have chosen. So, that is actually is indeed equal to the dimension of g. So, which is very important observation because uh, we know that uh, if you restrict to this uh, pi being irreducible representation, then using uh, Schur's lemma, we see that the c pi must be some scalar multiple of identity. Okay. So, in case we take pi to be irreducible, so we are specializing to this irreducible case. So, then using Schur's lemma, what we see this uh, c pi this must be scalar multiple. So, this must be some scalar multiple of identity on V. So, now uh, we already calculated the, the trace of the c pi. The trace of c pi is nothing but the dimension of G. So, which is the trace of c pi okay, which is also given to be now because this is lambda times identity. So, this must be lambda times dimension of V. So, that tells this lambda so that we are import we are actually looking forward to determine. So, that lambda is indeed actually uh, given to be the quotient of this dimension G divided by dimension V. So, it is not just uh, some complex number, it is actually a rational number, it is also positive rational number. Okay. So, this is uh, actually positive rational number. So, that means the C pi, the Casimir element, it is not just only acting on this uh, irreducible representation, it acts very explicitly by this rational number dimension g divided by dimension v. So, this is a very important observation. So, now let us see how one can modify this uh, definition of Casimir element for any representation. So, when pi is uh, no longer faithful, a slight modification is actually needed. So, that is not too much. So, what is the modification that we are going to do? So, now we just assume pi is general representation. Okay. So, there is no assumption on uh, pi. So, you take pi to be uh, representation of uh, g. Again g you continue to be assumed, assumed this is finite dimensional semi simple Lie algebra. Now, given this uh, pi representation, so, you can see that the kernel of pi that must be ideal inside G. So, the kernel of pi this is ideal inside G. So, we have seen that because G is semi simple, G can be written as direct sum of this simple ideals. In particularly, any ideal inside G also can be written as direct sum of those some, some simple ideals from those simple ideals. So, what I mean by that? So, from using the killing form, we actually proved that G must be equal to G1 direct sum, etcetera, direct sum GK, where this GIs are all simple ideals inside G. So, they, they are simple 
ideals inside G. If we take any I which is an ideal inside G, so then we can see that this I must be equal to this direct sum of G I intersection I where I range from 1 to k. So, now note that this G I intersection I this is either 0 or full because G I being a simple ideal. So, this is uh, has to be either full or 0. So, that means you have a some sub collection of this G I such that this I can be written as direct sum of G I for some I in capital A where this capital A is some sub collection of this 1 to k. And this is something uh, we know already from uh, the general theory. Okay. So, now because of that we can see that this kernel pi is also direct sum of simple ideals, some simple ideals that comes from G. So, now in particularly if I take G modulo the kernel phi, so this must be semi simple E algebra. So, this is again semi simple E algebra. So, in particularly this pi induces faithful representation of this uh, G dash. Okay. So, let me call it a G tilde. So, G tilde. So, this pi tilde. So, this is a map from this G tilde to again G L of V. This is one can assume to be faithful. Okay, faithful representation of G tilde. Note that so, now we, we have this pi tilde which is faithful representation. So, from our earlier arguments one can define what is called this Casimir element for this pi tilde. So, we simply take C pi to be equal to this C pi tilde. Okay. So, why this definition makes sense because this pi of G is same as pi tilde of this G tilde. So, that means what is the property of this C pi tilde? C pi tilde is an element of this endomorphism of V that commutes with the action of G tilde. But since pi tilde of G tilde is same as pi of G, so that tells us that this C pi tilde also commutes with the action of this G. So, that is the important property that we wanted, so that we get. So, note that, so this C pi which is C pi tilde commutes with pi of x for all x and g because either pi of x is 0 if it comes from the kernel or otherwise it is not 0 in that case it just commutes. So, this is how we modify the definition of this Casimir element for general uh, representations. So, we will actually use this information uh, in order to actually uh, prove the complete reducibilities of finite dimensional representation. So, for that I need one small fact which I will just uh, recall now and I will end with uh, that result. So, what is that small fact that we needed? So, if we have a this uh, representation of the semi simple E algebra, so we can say something about the image of that uh, G. Okay. So, let uh, pi which is a representation of uh, this uh, semi simple E algebra be a representation of semi simple Lie algebra G. So, then what one can conclude immediately the image of this G under this pi that should sit inside SL of V. So, these are all traceless matrices okay, or traceless operators on V. So, in particular if you restrict to one dimensional case. So, if V is being one dimensional then G must act trivially on this one dimensional representation. Why? Because SL of V is trivial for V uh, one dimensional. So, in particular G acts trivially on any one dimensional representation of G. So, how one proves this? So, you can see that uh, because uh, G is being semi simple, so G is equal to the derived algebra G G. So, in particularly pi of G must be equal to the bracket pi of G comma pi of G. 
So, in particularly this should live inside S L of V because uh, so commutator of uh, two maps should have trace less. Uh, so, that means if we take any uh, linear combination of that, that we again will have trace less operators. So, now uh, if we take V to be one dimensional, suppose V has one dimension. So, then it is immediate that this S L of V must be 0. So, that means pi of G must be 0. So, that means G acts trivially on this uh, one dimensional space. Okay. So, since uh, this G acts trivially on this one dimensional space, we already have this trivial action on this uh, complex numbers which is one dimensional. So, so, with the, so up to isomorphism we denote that by just a complex number C. Okay. So, this is what we denote it by one dimensional G representation of yeah, G one dimensional G representation. Okay, so, with this remark I will stop now, I will continue with uh, uh, complete reducibility in the next class. Thank you.